Hello and welcome to our seminar, Faster, More Efficient Peptide Synthesis with Significantly Less Solvent. I'm your moderator, Michelle. Our presenter today is Grace Vanier, Product Manager for CEN's Life Science Division. Grace heads a team of chemists and engineers in the R&D of new methods and instrumentation for chemical synthesis and bioscience applications. She is joined by guest panelist Eric Williamson, Peptide Chemist and Technical Coordinator for CEM, whom some of you may recognize as the moderator of our online peptide forum. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the seminar, so please feel free to send in your questions via the question panel at any time during the presentation. Thank you for joining us today, Grace. Thank you, Michelle, for the kind introduction, and I'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar today. And what I'm going to talk to you about is how we have taken peptide synthesis, and we have made it faster and more efficient um, through some chemistry and some hardware development that we've been doing over the past uh, the past year here at CEN. So what I like to do with uh, any any webinar is I like to start out with a poll question, kind of to get an idea of um, how everyone is attending, you know, what they're thinking, what they're feeling, maybe their motivations for being here. So my first question is, what is the biggest challenge you face with your peptide synthesis? Is it peptide purity? Is it how much solvent you're needing to use? Is it the speed at which you're getting your peptides? Is it your throughput? Do you need a lot of peptides? Or is it something else? Is there some other reason that you, you're, is your biggest challenge with respect to your peptide synthesis? So take a few seconds. I'm um, going to wait until we get all of our answers entered here. So again, purity, solvent usage, synthesis speed, throughput, or perhaps it's something else. Um, OK, we'll give it five more seconds, four, three, two, one. All right, we'll close out that poll. So give me just a second to uh, take a look at these results. OK, so we have a, a, an interesting mix here. Um, just shy of about half of you guys are interested and concerned with peptide purity being your biggest challenge. Um, and then about another quarter is of you are concerned about the synthesis speed. And then the last three is a pretty even mix. Um, and so, okay, well, that's not unexpected. Um, I hope that for most of you I'm going to show you that um, we're definitely going to give you high purity peptides. Uh, we have good ways to be able to do that and do it fast. And of course, addressing things like solvent usage and throughput needs in addition to that. So thanks to everyone for uh, putting your answers in, and I'm going to get going. All right, so before I really get started, though, I want to set the stage for why are we interested in peptide synthesis? Why does CEM want to do develop peptide synthesizers? And certainly, it's the same reasons why you're out there doing peptide synthesis research. And probably the biggest reason is that peptides have emerged as an attractive drug candidate. Um, and there's become, as such, a very high demand for peptides. You know, peptide drugs are, are more selective, and they have less toxicity issues. And there's becoming a lot more technologies available for delivery of peptides. And so they're, they're becoming just much more of a, a, an attractive uh, drug therapeutic. Um, and this is reasons why people are interested in these. But as such, and as the, the need for peptides has, has changed and developed over the years, and as we're becoming more um, knowledgeable about peptides and how we can use them, the synthesis is becoming more difficult. Uh, longer peptides are required, peptides that have very challenging synthetic motifs that are difficult to synthesize, perhaps they're very sterically hindered, or maybe have propensity to aggregate. So certainly there's, there's increasing synthetic challenges. And so we certainly th we, we look at both of these. We know that people need peptides, need lots of peptides for their studies, and they need to be able to make them in high purity and dealing with all of these synthetic challenges. So if we look at the synthesis process, so traditionally, and I'd say probably more than about you know, 10 to 15 years ago, to synthesize a 20 amino acid peptide, this is sort of a, an outline of what that process would have taken. So it would have been, for the synthesis itself, about 20 hours of time. Um, for the peptide synthesis cleavage, it would be uh, three hours for the cleavage. About one hour is analysis time. And 
Then for the purification, if it's required, it'll take about two hours. And then lyophilization would be another six hours. So certainly you can see that in this process, your most time-consuming part is, is certainly the synthesis. And you know, with that, you know, there's obviously there's the cleavage, and there's also then the, um, the lyophilization it's, itself is, uh, takes another six hours. All right, so since though, since 2004, um, roughly, which is when we introduced our first uh, microwave peptide synthesizers, um, we were able to decrease our synthesis time. So we brought that down about half, so from 20 hours of synthesis time to about 10 hours. We also are able to use the microwave technology to decrease the time for cleavage. So instead of three hours, we can now do that in about 30 minutes. Now, there's also been some different technologies introduced with respect to analysis, and uh, with that, we have our UPLC. And I apologize, I think we're having a few technical difficulties here. Um, we're trying to uh, get this worked out. So, uh, okay, I think we're good. Um, I think we've got, you guys have got my screen. So I apologize um, that we, uh, we didn't, weren't able to see my screen in the beginning there, but um, I think we're good now. Okay, so, again, I apologize. So where I've taken up here is I'm just talking about the, the process of peptide synthesis and really since 2004 with new technologies, both on our end with the synthesis, with the microwave technology, and then certainly there's analysis techniques that have sped it up. You know, we've improved this process, but still you can see synthesis still takes about 10 hours of time, so it still takes a while. So we certainly felt like we need to address some of those concerns. Okay, so what we did is we sat down about a year ago and said, okay, we want to we want to try and improve this process further. We really want to develop highly efficient solid phase peptide synthesis needs. And so these were the goals. These were the, the main goals we sat down with when we started this project. The first thing is that we wanted to make the process dramatically faster. So we improved the speed. We made it about you know, twice as fast when we introduced the mic original microwave technology. And that was good, but we want to make it even faster. And mainly the, the idea is that we want to make the suitable technology for anyone's production needs. Secondly, we wanted to have a significant solvent reduction. So we wanted to, basically we wanted to maximize the efficiency and reduce any unnecessary solvent washing from the synthesis. Since solvent costs money, and it, we, we wanted to reduce that, that amount. And of course there's environmental impacts as well. And lastly, we wanted to make sure that this works for a broad range of syntheses. So a broad range of peptides so that this is a technique that's going to work very well for every synthesis that you're going to be able to do uh, and, and should give consistent and good, reliable results. So this is what led us to design our Liberty Blue, and this is our next generation peptide synthesizer. Um, and so hopefully by now most of you have seen at least um, some, some of the marketing material with respect to the system. But I'm just going to give you a little bit of information about this unit because we're, we're very excited about this technology. So Liberty Blue system is a four minute cycle time. Now what do I mean by that? When I say four minute cycle time, that's the entire cycle. Deprotection, washing, coupling, all of that four minutes. So before, we would do a coupling in about five minutes with the original microwave technology. Now we're doing the entire cycle in four minutes. So this means we can synthesize a 30 residue peptide in about two hours. So that's pretty powerful. We're able to do very, very rapid synthesis. But what we've also been able to do is reduce the solvent usage up to 90%. That's a significant amount of solvent savings that we're able to accomplish with the Liberty Blue. We're able to maintain high purity peptides, and in, in, you know, in all cases, it's at least as good as the first generation microwave synthesizers, if not better. 
And lastly, because of the speed of this system, this fast sequential synthesis really is going to replace parallel synthesis. So the Liberty Blue is a, is a game changing technology and really with respect to the speed, it's 10 times faster than our first generation Liberty products. So the Liberty 12 and the Liberty 1 products that many of you are familiar with, we're now almost 10 times faster than those products. And it's 30 times faster than a conventional synthesizer. So you imagine that in the time it takes to do one single coupling on a conventional synthesizer, we were able to synthesize an entire peptide on the Liberty Blue. And what this does is it eliminates our synthesis bottleneck and gives us the, the ability to actually access purified peptide perhaps in a single day depending on the sequence. So if you look down here, I've got sort of a simple uh, bar graph to compare conventional synthesis. So if a 20 amino acid peptide conventionally would take you about 30 hours for the synthesis and an additional three hours for cleavage. So you, you know, very long synthesis time to get your isolated peptide. With our first generation synthesizers, we brought that down to about 10 hours for the synthesis, um, but still it would take you about a day to synthesize that sequence. Well, now with the, the Liberty Blue, we're able to synthesize and cleave that peptide essentially in less than two hours' time, uh, and which really basically is about comparable to the amount of time it's going to take to purify that peptide. So again, you can synthesize the peptide and have it purified all in a single day, uh, which is just, it's, it's really not feasible to be able to do something like that conventionally. So you might be asking yourself, well, how, how did you do this? How did you make it so fast and be able to still maintain high purity and also reduce the amount of solvent usage? So it was really a combination effort between the, our engineering teams on, and developing hardware and the chemistry teams in terms of optimizing our methods. And so in terms of the chemistry, what we did is we've reduced the chemistry time to three minutes total. And, and what our goal was in this process was we wanted that majority of our cycle time to be chemistry time. So you know, many times in, in, in peptide synthesis, if you look at your, the amount of time you take for a cycle, most of that time is spent doing washing, moving liquids through the system. And we didn't want that for the Liberty Blue. We wanted the majority of our cycle time to be chemistry because that's what we care about. We care about the chemistry. We want our reactions to happen. And so what we've been able to do is we've reduced our chemistry time to three minutes total, but that's now 75% of our total cycle time, which is what we wanted. So that means our hardware now is about one minute for the rest of the liquid handling time, um, which is about a quarter of our cycle time. So this is exactly what we were looking to try and do with the Liberty Blue. So in terms of the chemistry optimization, uh, what we did is we've decreased the reaction time for both the coupling and the deprotection. So our deprotection is about one minute and our coupling reaction is now about two minutes. So we've taken those times which deprotection was typically three minutes before and coupling was five, we've reduced those times. We've done this by maximizing the use of our microwave energy. Um, we have our discover system that we use with our microwave synthesizers has, has 300 watts of power available to it. And so we're actually taking advantage of having that power to be able to improve our process and rapidly heat up our, our sample, rapidly get to temperature so we can reduce our times. And we've eliminated the excess of washing. So we've decreased the number of total washes that we are necessary uh, it, during the cycle. And we've also decreased those volumes that are required. Uh, and so it's a combination of total number of washes and then the volumes that are required that are helping to reduce the solvent usage. And then in terms of the hardware design, we've actually reduced the need for uh, unnecessary background washing. So this means that um, we are able to effectively wash the system, have a very clean system without using excessive amounts of solvent. In terms of the hardware optimization, um, some of the things that we did is we've eliminated restriction points. What this means is that we're able to now have much faster flow rates through the system 
And this means we can do things like washing much, much faster, much quicker. It's a lot easier for us to move reagents through the system because there are no restriction points. And this has other advantages, but in terms of the speed, that's certainly what ha helps. We've also isolated our bubbling and reagent handling, which means that we can have an improved draining on the system and improved agita agitation. Again, important key points on the agitation especially for allowing us to be able to have these very rapid uh, uh, synthesis times. Okay, so I want to just take a few moments and actually tell you about some of the features of the system. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it yet, I just wanted to kind of walk you through the landscape of the Liberty Blue so you're familiar with all the, 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 the pieces here. So you'll see in the lower left-hand corner we have a three-bottle holder. This actually holds basically all of our external reagents. So unlike many marketing photos you might see of a, of, a, of a peptide synthesizer that may not have all the bottles associated, this picture actually shows you everything. This has got everything on it. So that three-bottle holder is held in place uh, next to the discovery unit uh, with magnets. And it holds the main wash solvent. So the center bottle right here, this 500 mil bottle, that's our main wash, typically DMF, but you could use NMP as well on that position. This also holds our deprotection bottle. So now you notice we only have a 250 mil deprotect bottle. And then lastly, we have our waste container. We have a one liter waste container. This does have a float sensor in it um, like you've, we have on our previous systems. Now certainly if you're needing to synthesize much longer peptides or uh, multiple peptides, and we'll uh, talk about that in a few minutes, you can add larger bottles. So there certainly is the option to add larger bottles. But in standard operation of a standalone Liberty Blue, these bottles are definitely sufficient. Then we have up top here is our manifolds. Now on our manifolds we have our activator and activator base bottles, and those would be over here to the left. Um, these are 250 mil bottles. Then we also have our 20 standard uh, amino acids. So these top two manifolds, there are 10 positions with each manifold. Those are 20 naturally occurring amino acids. Now these have 50 mil centrifuge tubes in each position. Um, or alternatively, um, you could use a 120 mil uh, centrifuge tube. And the nice thing about switching between those two tubes is there's no di no need for a different length of the dip tube in those bottles. Now down here on the lower right, we have seven additional positions. These can be used for unusual amino acids or for example you need to do a combination of the uh, of activation strategy, for example. So if you have any of those things happening, um, you could certainly use these seven additional positions. And again, you could use either the 50 or the 120 mil tubes in those positions. Down here in the lower right is our calibration stand. Um, this is also a convenient place to put the reaction vessel uh, if you needing to manipulate um, the reaction vessel itself. Again, held in place with magnets in that lower right hand corner, so we're nice and tucked out of the way when not needed. We have our Discover system, so with all the benefits of the microwave technology itself. And then we have our fiber optic probe, and this is how we measure temperature inside our reaction mix mixture. And certainly this is the most accurate method for temperature measurement, because it's a direct internal temperature measurement inside the reaction vessel. Okay, so lastly, uh, you may notice that it does have LED lights, and in addition to being pretty, these are actually do have a function on the system. Um, they help with setup of the system, so when you've programmed a peptide sequence, uh, the, light, the positions with which you will need to load your, re your amino acids will light up. And it also uh, gives you a visual indication of system status. So when the system is running, all the lights will be on. Um, when you get to an individual coupling, that particular amino acid position will blink. And so you can tell where exactly in the synthesis it is. Um, and it can give you an idea of if the system is in an error state. We do have a spill tray to protect our Discover system. Uh, and lastly, the covers of the unit are, are composite material, um, so these have solvent resistance, um, so there, you don't have to worry about um, the harsh chemicals that you're working with in the lab um, damaging the, the covers of the system. 
And just the last thing with respect to the, the features, it's a very small system. I kind of wanted to give you an, an aerial view of the system. It's a very small footprint. Um, so uh, with all of the bottles on, as I mentioned earlier, it's basically about 22 inches or 55 centimeters wide by about 18 inches or 47 centimeters uh, deep. So it fits in any fume hood or fume cupboard um, very easily. Um, because it's not a it's a it's a very small compact system. So I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the some of the features of the system uh, more of internally. So the core technology of the Liberty Blue system is our FlexAd technology. So that we've introduced here a completely new way with which to add reagents into our reaction vessel. And so what this means is FlexAd technology is press pressure-based reagent addition. And so what we're able to do is we're eliminating the need for individual liquid sensors. And the advantage that has is we don't have sample loops. Um, so one of the problems with, with liquid sensors is that they, they, they're a fixed volume. So uh, say 1.25 mils on the Liberty or Liberty, or Liberty One systems, we'd be limited to that volume. So the Liberty Blue does not have this limitation. Any volume you want to add, you can, because we're using this pressure-based addition rather than using sensors, optical sensors. This technology is, has very high accuracy and precision, and I'll show you in a second just some, some data to help support that. And it really gives you infinite volume accessibility. Now, of course, you're limited by the, the size of the vessel, so you can't certainly add more than the vessel can handle. But what this allows you is that you can choose whatever volume you want to add. So if you want to add one milliliter, you can easily do that. If you want a half a mil, you can do that as well. Or say you want to add two mils if you're doing a larger scale synthesis. All of that can be done, no changes to the hardware, nothing different has to be done. So it's, it's very, very flexible, gives you the flexibility of adding whatever volume you want to do. And what this does, it also makes it very easy to, to work on the small scale. Um, because you can now easily get down to an addition of half a mil without any issues. All right, so as, as promised, here's some data from our using the FlexEd technology. So what we did is we actually repeated uh, these experiments. We actually did them um, each time with five repeats. And what we did is we just chose three different volumes, so two milliliters, one milliliter, and 0 0.5 milliliters. We measured the addition each on each one of the those additions. We took our average amount delivered and then calculated our standard deviation. So for two mils, the average amount delivered was 2.02 .02 mils with a standard deviation of 0.01. Now you can see then for one and half a mil, again, very good um, accuracy and precision here for our data, giving us exactly one mil as our average and um, 0.48 mils for our half mil add. So very, very, uh, very accurate and precise in terms of these deliveries, and we can repeat these experiments over and over and see consistency across the board um, with respect to those additions. The system comes, of course, with a, a, a fully functional software. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of details about the software, but it has a lot of flexibility. So it has pre-programmed default methods to cover the entire synthesis scale range. We have things like the uh, bottle ch uh, change bottle features, which make the system easy to set up, makes it rapid and um, very easy to do. It's a very simple system to, to run. We have nice features in terms of usage calculators and reagent calculators to help it uh, help help you also with re setting up the reaction and setting up your synthesis um, to be able to get put basically the minimum amount of reagents you need. And of course, we have, as I mentioned, the default methods, but it also has fully customizable methods and cycles. So if you have an unusual reagent that you want to add and you know that you're going to need to do maybe a longer coupling time, or you know that you're going to have to do um, a different, different activation strategy, you can completely customize that and it's all, you have all that flexibility to be able to do that in this system. And then, of course, in terms of, of the maintenance and the, di and, and the service of the system has, has uh, 
automated cleaning routines, so it makes it very simple to flush out the system very rapidly um, and easy ways to diagnose when there's a problem with the, the, the unit. Now, of course, the, the Liberty Blue features our microwave technology, and there's a lot of benefits to using the microwave control. We can use the microwave energy for both the coupling and the deprotection steps. What this allows us to do is have very high purity peptides because we can take advantage of using the microwave for not just our deep protection or not just the coupling, but we can do it for both. And that allows us to get very high purity peptides. And here's a really good example of this. So this, the EGFR uh, sequence shown here, we synthesize this peptide under four different conditions. So in the first entry, we use conventional synthesis for both the deprotection and coupling. So this is just room temperature, you know, five minute, 10 minute deprotection, uh, and then a 30 minute coupling reaction. Crude purity was only about 18% in this case. So then we did a systematic study. First we used the microwave technology for our coupling reaction, but leaving the deprotection at conventional. We saw a modest increase in purity to 25%. Then we did the converse. We did microwave for the deep protection and left the coupling at conventional. And now you'll see we see a, a, an even larger increase to 39% for the crude purity. And really it's the combination of, of the two. We're using microwave for the deep protection reaction and microwave for the coupling reaction. Now we bring the crude purity of this peptide up to 61%. So it really shows that each one of those, those components individually shows an increase in purity, but really it's the combined, the combined use of microwave for heat protection and coupling that really is showing the power of, of using the, the, that technology. Now, some of the other things that we can do with the microwave is we can get complete control of energy for each step. So what that means is that we are able to, uh, to get the microwave uh, and control exactly how much power what temperature, how long are we going to run each reaction for each deprotection and coupling. And we have very easy ways to change that. So from one cycle to the next, we can rapidly change the temperature. And we know that this is important for temperature sensitive amino acids. So cysteine and histidine should be run at 50 degrees to prevent racemization. Uh, and so it's very easy to, to run those particular amino acids at 50, but all the rest of them at a higher temperature uh, as you're doing the rest of the synthesis. We also know things like phosphoamino acids, for example. Uh, you want to use room temperature deprotection. So again, it makes it very simple, though, to be able to run the room temperature deprotection, but then at the next coupling, use the microwave and be back up at those elevated temperatures. And we also know it's important for high energy processes to be able to go to even higher temperatures. So we know that the AIB residue or N-methyl amino acids require higher temperatures, sometimes upwards of 95 degrees. So again, to be able to rapidly change the temperature depending on the cycle, depending on the particular reaction, is really, really powerful for the microwave. All right, so it's time now for us to go to our second poll question. Kind of I want to make sure you guys are all still here. Uh, and what, I'm, what I want to know is, how much do you currently spend on your wash solvent per year. This is an approximation. I realize that I have this in US dollars and some of you are, are from around the world, but just give me an idea. Do you think you spend less than $10,000 per year? Maybe it's somewhere in the ten dollars to $20,000 per year. Maybe it's twenty to 40000 Maybe it's even more than that. Or perhaps you don't know. And in many cases, maybe you, you, aren't, you aren't really sure. So just take a few seconds. Think about maybe how much you think you might be spending on wash solvent per year. Uh, and uh, to and get you know get your choices selected. So we're gonna let this go for about another five seconds. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we'll get this closed out. Uh, I'm gonna take a, a look at some of these results and um, kind of share these with you. Okay, so it looks like um, about 50% of you are spending less than 10,000 on your wash solvent per year. And then about 30% of you are not quite sure. And the remaining of uh, are a good split between the 10 to 20 and 20 to 40%. So okay, well, um, it's good to see that many of you are not spending more than 10,000, which is good to good to hear. Um, but certainly, what I want to show you is is how we could save even more money. 
um, with respect to wash solvents being used with the Liberty Blue. Okay, so how, how much can Liberty Blue save you? Now obviously this is going to depend largely on how many peptides are you synthesizing, how long are these peptides, things like that. How many are you doing per day, how many per week, per year, etc. Um, this particular calculation, this is for a very high, um, a high, highly productive lab. This is a lab that is synthesizing many, many peptides. Um, and, and what we wanted to show is how much, how much money could be saved by using the Liberty Blue. Okay, so what, what, we, what we did here is we used a few calculation factors, had to make some assumptions. So we assumed the average length peptide was 15 residues. So these are all fairly simple peptides to synthesize. Um, in this case, about 20 peptides per day which gets about 5,000 peptides per year. So again, very high throughput labs. So you, you know, these numbers could be adjusted depending on your particular needs. So what this would mean, if you're using uh, any other synthesizer, you might be using somewhere around 9,000 liters of solvent per year. And that might cost you somewhere of, or sorry, reagent. This is reagent cost altogether. So this is not just main wash solvent, but all of the, all of the reagents, so amino acids, protection, etc. So that might be $190,000 per year. With the Liberty Blue, the amount of usage would be only 1,300 liters per year, which would cost about $72,000. And so what this means in terms of a savings is almost, you know, it's more than 7,000 liters of savings on the reagents. But if you calculate that out, that'll also be about $117,000 saved. So in one year, if this is the kind of usage that you would be doing with the Liberty Blue, you could more than paid for your system. Now, obviously, your usage might be much less. This 5,000, this is definitely at the high end. And actually, those those numbers that I calculated, um, basically from the the um, you know the 40, more than $40,000, just wash solvent alone would certainly be if you're about running 5,000 peptides. But again, you can imagine that depending on your usage, you certainly can make a significant savings in reagent costs just by using the Liberty Blue. Now, of course, in addition to saving money on reagents and wash solvent, having higher purity peptide also means you have lower purification costs. And in many cases, the crude purity for a peptide synthesized on a Liberty Blue is anywhere from 10 to 50 percent higher than conventional. And in many cases, these peptides are over 70 percent. And depending on your needs, you may not actually be needing to have purification. And if you do, when you start with a cleaner peptide, obviously it makes it a lot easier to purify. So you may not have to run, make as many passes through on your purification. It may not take as long. All right, so what I wanted to do is show you some, some of the chemistry comparisons because, of course, all of what I've told you is great, it's exciting about the Liberty Blue, but really what you care about is will it make good peptides? And so that's what I want to show you here. So we had selected a series of six peptides um, as, some, as some comparisons and some baselines to establish what kind of results you would see conventionally what kind of results we would have seen in our, our first generation Liberty systems and then the Liberty Blue. And so we've selected these six peptides and the first one here of course is ACP. Everyone's familiar with this. We know this peptide very well. We know it's very easy to, um, it's a good test sequence, but it's an easy peptide to synthesize. So synthesizing ACP, conventionally uh, you can, it gives about 39%. Certainly you can improve this by changing the synthesis conditions, but we just were trying to do a baseline comparison here. The first generation Liberty systems would give about 91%, and on the Liberty Blue, we're at 93% crude purity. This JR Tenmer peptide uh, is a pretty well-known sequence. It's a short peptide, uh, but it's known to have difficult, uh, it's difficult to synthesize. Um, conventionally, you get about 42% crude purity, whereas in the first generation systems, about 60%, and Liberty Blue can bring that actually up to 67%. The ABRF uh, sequence from the 1992 study, this is a, a good peptide to um, it use as a, a case study for arginine in particular. Uh, we know that there are challenges with incorporating the arginine residue into this particular sequence. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we had a robust method for incorporating the arginine residue. So conventionally it was 56%, first generation Liberties was 79%, and the Liberty Blue gave us 89 or I'm sorry, 82. 
uh, this fourth sequence, this is uh, a sequence that we have, have used extensively to actually do uh, spartamid and racemization studies. So this ABC20 mer is, is essentially, it's all 20 naturally occurring amino acids uh, with a DG motif at the C terminus of the peptide. So this particular sequence, you'll see here conventionally, and even in the Liberty and in the Liberty Blue, pretty much gives a similar, similar results. But like I said, we used this to actually do all of our racemization studies, which of course we've done, we've repeated all of those experiments with the Liberty Blue to make sure we've not introduced any additional side reactions. So thymosin, uh, this particular sequence is known to be difficult, has um, challenges with beta-branched amino acids. The conventional synthesis is 37 percent. The first generation systems gave about 58, and then Liberty Blue is 61. Lastly, as a comparison for more difficult and very well-known peptide is beta amyloid. And here, conventional synthesis was 56 percent. The Liberty systems give about 67, and the Liberty Blue is 72 percent. So to show you then about the time it takes, though, for these syntheses and solvent usage, I wanted to actually show you the comparisons. So same sequences, and again, I've just um, transposed the purities for these peptides. So now you can see, here's our total synthesis time. So for the ACP peptide, it takes less than 45 minutes for the synthesis. And then across the board then here, you can see as the, the sequence length increases, you know, obviously we have higher amount of time. But beta amyloid, which is a 42 residue peptide, we can synthesize that in less than four hours time. Now over here you can see here's our total waste. So this is reagent usage in addition to washing of the vessel. And so you can see then for you know, ACP it's 150, 150 mils up to beta amyloid which is a little over a liter of, of solvent used. So, so you can tell if, if you imagine doing any of these syntheses on your conventional synthesizers it's going to take much longer for those syntheses. Um, you know, beta amyloid to synthesize that peptide, each coupling probably will take at least two hours of time. And in less than four hours, we've synthesized the entire peptide. And typically for solvent waste, you're looking at many, many liters of solvent used in those syntheses. So here I just want to show you a, 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 the chromatogram. This is the a chromatogram from our UPLC of the beta amyloid sequence. So again, 72 percent crude purity and our synthesis time was less than four hours. All right, so time now for our third and final poll question. And this is a simple one. This is a basically a yes or a no. I just want to know, are you currently synthesizing peptides in parallel? I know many labs have many peptide synthesizers. Um, sometimes you have some that are dedicated for doing difficult sequences. Some are for higher throughput. Uh, so just kind of curious, are, are you currently synthesizing your peptides in parallel? Um, give you just a few more seconds to, to answer this, this one. So three, two, one. All right, we'll close that down. Okay, so it looks like about 80% of you do not use a parallel synthesizer and about 20% do. Okay, well, that, that's, that's a, a, a good mix. Um, for those of you who do not, um, you know, there might be many reasons why you're not. Maybe you don't have that need. Maybe you don't even have a parallel synthesizer. And for those that you do, um, perhaps I've got some, some interesting things to think about with respect to the Liberty Blue. Liberty Blue has a couple of different accessories and optional features, um, and one of which is what we call our Liberty Blue HT, or high throughput. This is a resin loading module. So that's, you see these two pieces that sit here next to our Liberty Blue. So we have a, a 12 position module, which is this, this first module here. And then you can add a second 12 position module to give you a total of 24 positions. Now how this works is that you would put your resin in one of these tubes, and you would transfer then over to, into the Liberty Blue, to the synthesis, and then transfer the resin back with the complete peptide. And because of how fast the Liberty Blue is, it really, it, it really can change the way that your, your, your workflow is. And so to have the, the, the resin loading option gives you the opportunity to set up multiple peptides and walk away while it runs those sequences for a couple of hours. Otherwise, you'd have to come back to the system 
and change it out, change out your resin each time you want to synthesize a new peptide. Now, what does this mean for you? So, what we see then is in the future is that really that sequential synthesis will replace parallel synthesis. Now, now, why is that? Why, why do we feel like that would be the case? There's many advantages to fast sequential synthesis. One of which is that it gives you single peptides very quickly. So your average length of peptides will be synthesized in somewhere between one to two hours. So it's very, very fast to synthesize those sequences. It's a lot less complex instrumentation. So there's no robotic arms. Um, there's not a lot of complex you know, syringes and things like that that need to be used uh, typically in a, a robotic parallel synthesizer. So it's a lot, a lot simpler instrumentation. It eliminates your purification bottleneck. So whereas if you're synthesizing 20 peptides in parallel, you have to wait for all those syntheses to be complete before you can even begin to cleave your peptides, isolate them, and purify them. On the Liberty Blue, as soon as the peptide is finished, you can take it off and you can begin the workup and start purification. And you get complete control at each step. And this is really important. So if you're synthesizing a peptide in parallel, you have to make choices on how you want to synthesize that. And basically, if you're going to run a coupling reaction, and all of your peptides are running a coupling reaction, they're all going to have to run for the same amount of time. So if you have something that's susceptible to racemization, or if you're doing a deprotection and it's susceptible to aspartamate formation, you, you're going to have to deal with that. You're going to have to have make those choices. So that's, that's something that's different. We can control every single step every single reaction, and we can choose exactly what conditions we want to run. And of course, I, I just show that we get much higher purity peptides than you do conventionally, part of which is because we can have complete control at each step. So certainly, the advantages of doing synthesis in a fast sequential manner really eliminates the need to do parallel synthesis. So to show you a comparison, and this is just a quick, you know, kind of a quick comparison of of a synthesis time. If you're going to synthesize 24 20 amino acid peptides conventionally, it's likely going to take you about two hours for this, the, the cycle time um, for each, each amino acid. Now in the Liberty Blue, we got about four minutes. So in the, the parallel synthesizer, to synthesize these, these 24 peptides, it's going to take you about 40 hours. The Liberty Blue, even synthesizing them one at a time, sequentially, it'll take about 34 hours. So we can synthesize these peptides faster, and again, because we've got complete control, we're going to get very high purity peptides, um, and we're going to be able to, to be able to have exact control over the reaction conditions for every peptide. All right, so some of the other features that we have, our optional features for the Liberty Blue, include the cleavage option. So this is just a, it's a module that sits over here next to our Liberty Blue system. It's an isolated module. Uh, it protects our Liberty Blue from, our, from harsh cleavage reagents, but still allows you to take advantage of the microwave for doing the cleavage reaction. You can do a microcleavage in as little as two minutes. So if you want to do a quick test to see how your synthesis is progressing, so you have a difficult coupling, and you want to make sure that you've got, you've had that go completely, uh, that coupling go to completion, you can do a quick microcleavage in just two minutes. You can cleave your full peptide in about 30 minutes. Um, when we run the full cleavage, we run it for 30 minutes just to make sure we get all of those side chain protecting groups off um, and get the highest purity and yield of our peptide. And certainly you can get improved purity with using the microwave technology for doing the cleavage. And here's just one example of such. So in this particular case, we synthesize the, the TAT peptide. And you, you know in the sequence we have multiple arginine residues. Uh, and that PBF protecting group on the arginine uh, can be really difficult to deprotect during that final cleavage step. So what we did is a comparison. We did a conventional room temperature, 30 minutes uh, cleavage. And you can see we only get about 7%. So it's very, very messy. We're getting incomplete cleavage for our peptide. When we run this in the microwave, so we run 30 minutes, it's only at 38 degrees. So these are not very harsh conditions for doing the cleavage. You can see we get 79% cleavage.
crude purity for our peptide. And lastly, the, the Liberty Blue system also has an optional UV monitoring feature. This is actually installed inside the Liberty Blue, so there's no additional bench space required uh, when using the Liberty Blue. Um, only our waste from the deeper tact passes through the UV detector, so it's only going to be um, just the waste that we're going to be monitoring for this particular case. Now, UV monitoring provides a lot of advantages. Um, in addition to the, the, the ultimate goal of having a high purity peptide, it can give you information about the structure of your peptide. It can give you information about your coupling efficiency. So if you are synthesizing a peptide that you know you'll be, you'll, you'll be synthesizing again at some point, you can actually get an idea of how well your coupling, your coupling protocol is working. And you can make changes the next time you have um, your synthesis. It gives you the opportunity to have more efficient use of reagents. So if you know you've got, say, a, a sequence with multiple isoleucines and you know you've had deletions, well, instead of double coupling each one of them, you could use the UV monitor to figure out where maybe the, the more difficult um, couplings are in that sequence and only use double coupling. So it, it has the same function as with a, a Liberty system, for those of you who are familiar with it. And here this shows you uh, a, a graph, a real-time run graph for the synthesis. So in this particular case, for synthesizing the peptide, we get good, good purity along the way or good deprotection until right toward the end of the sequence you see we start to have failed deprotections. Um, and the reason we're seeing these, these failed deprotections is they're, they're difficult. And so the system can do a third deprotection as you, as, as you you designate in the software, and then you can also choose to have it make changes to the subsequent coupling reaction. Because you can make the assumption that if you have a difficulty protection, you may have a difficult coupling as well. Okay, so with that, uh, I have reached the end. So the Liberty Blue system, I hope you all would agree, is a revolutionary product for peptide synthesis, saving you a lot of, of time and money in your synthesis. So if you need some additional information, um, you're more than welcome to visit our website at www.cem.com. You can send an email into CEM at info, uh, or you, of course you can always contact us by phone uh, with our 800 number for our U.S. and, and Canadian customers, um, or you can call our direct line um, shown at the bottom. So at this point, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, and uh, be happy to, to, to talk, discuss anything in more detail that you might want some more information about. Oop. Okay. We got some questions coming in. All right. Uh, so yeah, we have our first question. This is actually a really good question. Uh, what's the smallest synthesis scale that the blue is capable of? Oh, that is a good question. Um, so the the Liberty Blue system can go down to 20 micromoles synthesis scale. Um, with the the um, the lower volume require or lower volume delivery for the FlexAd technology, we're able to easily get down to that that size scale. Right, our next question, um, given the different types of resins have different swelling properties, do you have solvent adjustments automated for specific resin types? Uh, for example, more solvent for resins that swell to a greater extent. Um, that's also a great question. Um, that is correct. So the way that we have built our software is that you can indicate if you're using a low swelling uh, or high swelling resin, um, or you can also make the, the assumption based on substitution. So we have a certain set of cycles that are designed for your polystyrene, your low swelling resins, um, and then a second set of cycles that are designed for high swelling or low substitution, like your peg-based resins, for example. Um, so the system can, can make those adjustments. Um, you don't actually really have to change the cycles. Those are already built into the system. Our next question is actually a follow-up to the first question. Um, on the opposite end of the scale, uh, what's the largest scale that the Liberty Blue is capable of? 
uh, the Liberty Blue can go up to a 5 millimole scale. Uh, next question, um, somebody wants to know if uh, they have uh, just the manual Discover unit, is it possible to upgrade later to the fully automated system with the older Discover? Yes, absolutely. The Discover system, if it's even um, an older system that you've had, certainly can be used uh, to upgrade with the Liberty Blue. Um, that's not at all a problem. Our next question, um, they want to know, um, how problematic is the issue with uh, cross-contamination between amino acids if, for example, they use the same uh, tube position for two different amino acids in subsequent uh, peptides? Okay. Well, say, for example, if they used um, the external position 1 for two different amino acids, um, the, you can easily back flush the position between um, the two syntheses, and that's a, you can, that efficiently will clean out the position, and there's no, no concern for cross-contamination that point. Uh, the next question, um, can this uh, chemistry that's used on the Liberty Blue be adapted for the older Liberty systems? Uh, yes, that is, that is actually possible. We have cr um, created a document that allows us to um, to, to modify our methods in the Liberty and the Liberty One um, to take advantage of some of the solvent savings. Now, certainly, you're not going to be able to achieve the same, uh, the exact same solvent savings in the exact same times because the hardware is different. Um, but you can at least decrease the cycle times and decrease the, some of the solvent usage um, in the Liberty and the Liberty One. Um, and if, if you're interested in that, you know, please you can contact us directly, and we can send you that information. Uh, the next question, is it possible to use high swelling resins such as um, tinted gel with the Liberty Blue using the resin transfer option? Um, high swelling resins uh, with the resin transfer will likely still, you still have to use the, the manual transfer. Um, we're working on trying to optimize that process, but it's difficult with those high swelling resins to move them through that tubing and make sure you do it, do it efficiently, and we want to make sure that we get all of that resin transferred. Uh, the next question, uh, what's your coupling protocol for arginine on the Liberty Blue? The arginine method on the Liberty Blue is, is similar to what we do on an existing Liberty system. Um, so the challenge with arginine is that you can have the potential for lactam formation um, during the coupling. And as we know, when you form that lactam, you, you basically your coupling is, is, that is no longer a viable coupling reagent and it's, it, your coupling will be um, stalled out, you result in deletions. So the way we do this on a Liberty is we do a, a, a slow ramp to temperature, so we do a um, low power in the beginning, and then we add the microwave toward the end of the method. And then in, on, a, on a Liberty Blue, that's, that's the method itself. On a Liberty 1 and Liberty 12, we would do a double coupling. But we don't find that we need to do that double coupling on the Liberty Blue. So our next question is a, a very good question. With the cleavage option, are the cleaved peptides transported through the system? Is there any risk of cross-contamination? No, that, that, that is a good question, and they're not. So the, the cleavage module is completely isolated from the, the Liberty Blue itself. So there's no, there's no concern of cross-contamination. That keeps everything completely isolated from the Liberty Blue. And then the cleavage option itself, it's very easy to wash between syntheses to make sure that there's no contamination from one sequence to the next. The next question is another very good question. Is it necessary to place the system in a hood, or can it be run from, say, a bench top? The unit can be run from a bench top. Um, there is a, a vent line that does need to go into some sort of exhaust or fume, um, fume removal, be an elephant trunk, or whatever, however your lab is set up. So it can be on a bench top, um, but you do want to make sure it has some access within um, about six feet from the unit for exhaust for that particular vent line. Uh, so another question following up on the, the smaller scale questions, um, how low can the ads be done accurately? Um, the lowest volume that we, we are 
very confident with is 0 0.5 milliliters for the Flexad. Um, we've been looking at lower, lower volumes, but at the moment that's the volume that we, we feel most confident with. Well, thank you, Grace. Um, that's all the time we have for questions today. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us, and we'd like to remind you that if you have any more questions about today's presentation, Please feel, feel free to call us or visit us online at www.cem.com. Or again, you can call us at 1-800-726-3331. Thank you very much.